In this episode of the PitCon podcast, we speak to Joseph Wang, Associate Professor at the University of San Diego, about the versatility and future of biosensor technologies. My name is Joseph Wang. I'm professor in UC San Diego, and I'm a professor of nanoengineering, but I do basically biosensor analytical chemistry, was designing a wearable sensor on the body, but all type of point of care, a self-testing, portable, a smaller device for a clinical diagnostic, security, wellness, etc. And how did you become involved with this research field? Oh, it's a long story, four <laughs> decades of career. So I, I like to move to new topic. When I started in the 80s, was no nanotechnology, no wearable sensor, but I, my basic training is analytical chemistry. And I graduated from the Technion in Israel, came to the state for a postdoc. But I like to move to a new direction, meeting, addressing the societal needs uh, in security, climate change, uh, medical, and moving to new, new direction and create a uh, new frontier, yeah. And kind of speaking a little bit more about um, your your current kind of activities, why is it so important to develop non-invasive methods to obtain um, real-time biochemical information? You know, the classical uh, diagnostic is based on on-spot blood measurement. You do it periodically, twice a year. It don't give you. It gives you a, just single measurement, infrequent and. Uh, Many applications you need to follow up and down, like in diabetic, which is uh, the best example. And in diabetic, we have already what we call CGM, continuous glucose monitor, where you need to follow the glucose fluctuation up and down. But it's not only for diabetic. You need to do it for cardiac, for stress, for wellness, for nutrition. So just measuring the blood uh, Free, yeah, monthly or uh, quarterly, it's not enough to give you any full picture. And you really want to see the trend. And uh, it's not only in medical, also in uh, fitness, you want to have a continuous monitor of your uh, uh, hydration or lactate, all type of parameters that going up and up, kidney disease, uh, cardiac disease, a lot of variation, temporal variation that just one measurement a month will not give you any information. No, definitely. And why are electrochemical sensors so exciting for these applications? Yeah, the beauty of electrochemistry is a small, compact device, portable, uh, easy to mass produce, uh, low power requirement. So they are very attractive. If you look at the glucose market, they're all dominated by electrochemistry. All the meter now, either the finger stick blood, which is a, a mobile self-testing or wearable. They're all electrochemistry because of these unique properties. And could you give some examples of the target molecules that these sensors might be able to um, detect? Yeah, so again, diabetic is always, if you can get better and better glucose monitoring, the huge market, multi-billion dollar market. But we're also looking for sensor, I talked yesterday in my award symposium, for alcohol, for drunk driver, for drug of abuse like opioid. Uh, we're looking for stress monitoring like cortisol. We're looking for vitamin for personal nu nutrition. We're looking for stress element and for also for mineral. We're looking for uh, uh, nerve agent or explosive, just monitor the surrounding on the body. So a wide range of electrolyte, metabolite, hormone, etc. Yeah. And are there any challenges um, that need to be addressed before sure, using yeah. these sensors? I mean, the beauty is non-invasive, which is advantage. You don't need to take the blood, but still everything needs to compare to the blood, which is the gold standard. So we need to validate. Also, it's not control condition. In the lab, everything is control. Here you have uncontrolled, you're running around. In the summer, in the winter, the temperature is changing, all the conditions changing. So there are the, these receptors, the enzymes are not so stable in uncontrolled condition. Always we have issue of what we call biofouling. You see, you have sensors which are for physical. It's all started with mobility, measuring the steps, measuring the calorie, measuring the 
ECG art, but these are easy because they are physical. When you come to chemical sensing, you need a bioreceptor. You need to immobilize to make it stable. And this is why we don't have many of these except the glucose. So I can imagine the um, commercial market isn't very well developed at the moment. Then. Except diabetic is already well there, yeah. But there are a lot of interest for many, uh, again, what we call personalized nutrition. Now with the pandemic, a lot of people, like uh, for the elderly, you don't want them to go to the clinic and do the testing. So if you can do telemedicine, remote medicine, where the doctor can get the readout wirelessly, but in general, it's a lot of interest for sport, performance, uh, like I told you, cortisol, stress monitoring, lifestyle, other nutrients like ketone or vitamin, uh, electrolytes, sodium, potassium, calcium, all of them are very important. Oh, definitely, and I can imagine it can help um, people take more autonomy over their own. Exactly, yeah, it's self-care, better compliance all the time. You have 24 seven, and really, you don't miss like when you do a periodic monthly testing, yeah. Mm. And kind of speaking more towards um, your current kind of activities again. So first of all, congratulations on being um, the much, recipient yeah. of this year's Ralph and Adams Award in Analytical Chemistry. So what does it mean to be the recipient of this award? No, it's a very, it's a great honor because I knew Ralph Adam. Ralph Adam passed away in 2002, but he was an amazing scientist. But more importantly, he was a wonderful person. So he had a vision, sharing my idea to make it simple, but very creative. He was the first one to put electrode in the brain of small animal looking for neurochemical in the brain. This was in the 70s, you know. I'm now putting electrode in the skin, which is easy, but imagine in the 70s to put electrode in the brain. So he had the vision to do so. He was an amazing uh, person, and so it's a great honor to get an award on the name of Ralph Adams. And again, also, uh, all the previous awardees in the past decade are all uh, the top leader in the field of analytical chemistry. It's nice to hear that personal touch exactly, towards the yeah. award oh, yeah. as well. And what are you working on right now that you are particularly excited about? Yeah, we have a big group of 40 people in uh, UC San Diego and I have two subgroups. One is the wearable sensor. The other subgroup, which is also exciting, is micro-robot nanomachine, which is for little swimmers that go in the body and deliver drugs and also can do the sensing in the gut in the lung and so on. So these are both exciting. Wearable is relatively new for chemical sensing, and we pioneer the, what we call lab on the skin to do the analytical lab, not the step on mobility. So to do the chemistry is really exciting, and not only on the skin, we do it on the mouth, on contact lenses, under the skin, what we call micro needle. So any biofluid, sweat, saliva, tear, and ISF, which is institutional fluid, all of them are using a platform, as I mentioned, tattoo on the skin or mouth guard in the mouth, contact lens in tears or micro needle under the skin. Oh yeah, but really building lab on the skin, lab under the skin, lab in the mouth, yeah. And um, kind of speaking more about your attendance of this year's PitCon, Obviously, for um, the previous two years, PitCon had to cancel its in-person events due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Why is it so important for uh, researchers and individuals to meet in person, such as at events like PitCon? Indeed, yeah, and we missed the last two years. Actually, last year I was, I got a virtually a big medal, Talanta medal, but it was a virtual event that I miss. Even for award presentation, you meet all your friends, all the speaker coming to speak about you, about your research, but no, just the direct interaction with the people, the colleagues, also with the young student, a student meeting us also. So today I gave another talk. So it's amazing just to meet in person with colleagues after this <laughs> 40 months of Zoom, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's nice to actually see people <laughs> oh, yeah, in, person, in real yeah, life. It's completely different, yeah. And uh, what are you looking forward to for PitCon San Diego next year? Oh, week? welcome to San Diego. We welcome all of you. You'll enjoy it. It's a beautiful location. And San Diego is becoming a mecca for biotech now. Uh, and there will be a lot of opportunity because a lot of big companies 
located in San Diego, we have Illumina for genomic, Dexcam, Qualcomm, it's a mecca for digital medicine. And we have a beautiful convention center on the beach of San Diego Bay, so you can really walk around. Uh, Philly is nice, you have a beautiful market, but San Diego, you'll enjoy the, the Bay, San Diego Bay, our fish taco, Balboa Park, San Diego Zoo, but convention center is also beautiful like here, so, and the weather will hopefully will be even wet, uh, better than here, yeah. Hi, Philly, a little bit warmer than oh, what yeah, we've seen here. Oh, yeah, always warmer in San Diego.